Thank you to TEDx Boston for having me. My name is Khalid Jones. And the name of my talk is The Future is DAO, How the Blockchain is Revolutionizing the Sports Fan Experience. I think that sports primarily has a responsibility as we move into the Web3 space, a responsibility that has been born out of the ubiquity of the sports experience by fans. At some point in time, we've all either played, rooted for, or rooted against somebody. So from that standpoint, for many, coming into the metaverse, sports will be the first touch point that they have. I think that the blockchain is in the midst of and will spur the next modern sports revolution. And when I talk about modern sports revolution, I'm talking about the play that happens on the quarter field or the relationship between teams, players, and fans. So I'm not talking about, for example, Kurt Flood breaking the free agency line, or for example, Jackie Robinson breaking, breaking the color line, or someone like Billie G. King fighting for women's rights in, te in tennis. We're talking about what happens on the field or on the court. The first modern revolution, in my opinion, is the advent of advanced sports analytics. This really allowed teams and players to understand beyond the base level statistics, beyond points per games or just RBI, and to more advanced metrics that have revolutionized sports strategy, such as the shift in baseball or the explosion in three-point shooting in basketball. The second modern sports revolution has been the rise in fantasy sports. This has allowed players to connect with fans and fans to be their own GMs. And so what was happening on the field or on the court was actually translating to social capital and nowadays real capital. And the third modern sports revolution is what we're experiencing right now. It's Web2 platforms allowing athletes direct control and management of their content and skipping the middleman in large part of the landed media and reaching their fans. We're seeing that come to a boiling point now with likes of Draymond Green and the advent of the new media, as he calls it. I want you to think, as we talk about the metaverse and Web3, <coughs> excuse me, and Web3 principles, and going into redefining the relationship between players and teams and fans, I want to think beyond the collectible NFT. Like I said at the top, sports has a special, special responsibility here because that's one of the first touch points. So if it's something like NBA Top Shot, if you look at charts of NFT sales over the last two years, you see a spike when NBA Top Shot came into the market, which sold collectibles uh, based on NBA moments. Or things like DraftKings Marketplace, which were recently has brought this concept to a larger audience through individual player NFTs. And then platforms such as Air, which is Michael Jordan's platform, which is now putting more utility into those NFTs. But I want to think beyond this, because when most people think sports and the metaverse and NFT, this is what they're thinking about. But I want you to take those thoughts and put them all out of your mind. Although I have to say parenthetically, as I literally say parenthetically here on the screen, that they're not going anywhere. But this is not what this discussion is about. We're going to move beyond that for purposes of our discussion. We're move, and then moving beyond that, we're moving from something that's static to something that's kinetic. If you've heard any of these other kinds of talk, you, you hear talk of you know, rights that are inside of, of an NFT, or you hear about things such as utility value. So something that's static, no rights, essentially a piece of art, and there will always be a place for that. A kinetic, kinetic NFT, or kinetic something that's in the, in the Web3 space, like I said, it allows you to do something with it. It has movement, it has actions. It connects you from the Web3 space into the real world in some meaningful way. An example of a, a, a static NFT is a, a sports collectible that we've talked about. An example of something that's more kinetic is a platform such as Sorare, which is, if you're familiar with it, a fantasy soccer uh, platform where uh, ownership of an NFT allows you to play that player in a fantasy league. But I want you to keep in mind that we're evolving from static to kinetic as it involves uh, sports involvement in the metaverse. The next modern sports revolution will be Web3 giving unprecedented fan ownership over their sports fandom in three key relational areas. The first is the player fan, team fan relationship. The second is team ownership structures. And the third, and perhaps most controversial as we'll talk about, are team administrative functions. I want to stick on the player fan, team fan relationship for a moment. In the modern, in modern sport, across all sports, for all professional sports for the most part, We've seen over the last 20 years an increase in player movement from team to team, and we've seen an increase in player agency over their own careers. What this essentially has created is a situation where uh, fans 
have become greater fans of individual players than necessarily of teams. I know when I was young, team loyalty was the whole thing. Yeah, you had your favorite fans, your favorite players, excuse me, but you were really team loyal. And that team loyalty exists, but we're going to explore a little bit about how the new Web3 space <coughs> may allow uh, teams to take more control of their fandom while all at the same time allowing players and fans to have deeper connections as well. Team ownership structures. We may come see a day where whole teams are owned in a completely decentralized manner. Uh, we have some analog with this in the real world, and I think it's always important to tie analog uh, ideas or real world ideas to Web3 principles. So if you're familiar with the structure of ownership amongst all sports leagues, professional sports leagues, almost every team across every major sports league uh, is owned by an individual or group of individuals, except for one. And that's the Green Bay Packers. And I think that they serve as uh, a principled example of how you may be able to apply these kinds of decentralized Web3 principles here, even at a decision-making capacity. And third is team administrative functions. Even if we agree that we may be able to decentralize through certain structures certain parts of the fan experience, uh, there's been some hesitance to uh, extend that to key decision-making processes. So for example, uh, we, may be, we may be allowing to have uh, coin holders um, to uh, decide what kind of uniforms a team is going to wear next, or maybe what shoes your favorite player is going to wear, or even touchdown dances. But how comfortable are we extending that to um, allowing a decentralized network of fans to decide who we're going to draft, uh, what kind of defense are we going to play, um, and should we blitz on third down or not? And in my opinion, the future is DAO. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of dad jokes. So, OK, the future is DAO. DAO are structures that are decentralized, autonomous organizations. And this is important for our conversation here uh, is because we're talking about the kind of ownership, the kind of agency over our teams that can establish themselves in a Web3 space um, that looks a little bit different than we have now that's completely top down. And the kind of applications for this type uh, of Web3 structure uh, in, in the sporting field and what that means for the team fan relationship. I told you, right? Okay, but DAO what? Uh, DAOs could potentially provide for the ultimate fan connection uh, through ownership. Um, and, and, and I see this happening in, in four places in particular, but there, there could be others with, with questions that get asked out of that. One is uh, uh, player fan clubs, for example. I mentioned before you deciding what kind of shoes your favorite player is going to wear, what you know, touchdown celebration that they're going to do. Um, but, it, but in this model, um, these decisions are being made and then hopefully executed faithfully uh, by the players. Once again, bringing players closer to fans um, in ways that potentially could be executed in, web, in, a, in a Web 2 format, um, but where players may be able to benefit more directly from the closeness of that relationship. You can see how this would work in foundations as well. Um, players a lot of times connect with fans through this idea that they are doing things charitably, um, but fans have never really been involved in deciding what that charitable outreach uh, looks like. And players may want to know what they can be doing that's connecting more with uh, the, 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 the similarities of how their fans feel um, in the philanthropic space. Uh, three, I think we may get to wholly owned teams, and we'll talk a little bit about that with some of the time we have left and some of the examples that are already happening. And you can go from wholly owned teams to wholly owned decentralized leagues. That future may not be now, but that future is certainly coming. And then fourthly, decentralized team administration. We touched on a little bit earlier, but there will come a time, there will be experiments that will be made uh, where teams, maybe not starting at the, the major four level, but certainly at minor league levels, will say, all right, we want to bring fans into an ownership position where they have not only just skin in the game, but also decision-making authority. Who are we going to draft next? Can I create a network of scouts where I incentivize them um, through tokenization, um, and so they have incentive to give back the right answers or the answers that they believe are correct, and that they're graded and rewarded on the correctness or incorrectness of those outcomes, and then also giving team administrators the wisdom of the crowds at the same time. We have current applications of these DAO principles in the current sports, sports world. Fan-controlled football is a league that exists that allows fans to vote on uh, the next play the team is going to run. And also, um, they've experimented now with having some of their expansion teams be partially owned in an NFT format. And the same thing happening with the big three. These things are happening just this year. And also, in the name, image, and likeness space, a DAO has been created by a University of Michigan collective to dole out NIL money. And lastly, I'll end with the hazards 
of Dow and Spores. You want to be careful with what kind of decisions you put into the collective. You want to know how to properly grade an individual's input. And people who aren't your fans could come in to sabotage your decision making or just get some intel. And with that, the end on the future is that some of these principles may not be right for today, but to think that they are not coming in the sports space would be naive, and should we all be prepared for that future to come? Thank you.